go to Idlewood. I'm gonna go up this side of this mountain, I guess up over the top. I'm heading to San Diego, so we're leaving uh and uh we're gonna take this route. Never been this way. Instead of going down I-10, we're gonna take this little two-lane highway all the way down to San Diego. Take a look at it to see. Pretty wild for all these rocks. Okay, uh, turnout, lookout point. We fly the drone here. The wind is blowing though. So, just kind of take a look, see how we're climbing up the mountain. It's the valley down there where I just came from. This is pretty cool. A lot of big limestone rocks here. Well, there's, oh, there's a turnout right there. Wow. I'm gonna come back. Beautiful. So we're heading to Idlewood, is the first town I think on this route. And it's 37 miles down this road somewhere. pretty wild how they made this road usually they cut straight through so you can get over but this kind of just follows around and works its way up the mountain itching to fly the drone since I've been here in California and it hasn't happened so this looks like a good spot there's some what's the wind blowing to fly it but the wind's blowing too much you see that I don't know if you can see it. You see how much the bushes are moving? It's not a good de deal to put the drone up here with that wind. You always want the wind to be under you. You don't want any wind, really. That's the best optimal flying time with no wind. The drone performs the best, and you get the best stabilized pictures out of it. But you only want you don't want it to be over 20 miles an hour. And you can see how these these shrubs are moving right there in the wind. It's more than 20 miles an hour right now. Wow, it's a shame. You could get a beautiful picture here with that drone. Pretty cool. What a beautiful mountain. I don't know the I don't know the name of this mountain range. Um, it's the one that's right in Tabazan. It, it's it's where the Morongo uh, Indian Nation is. Um, but it's a beautiful mountain range they have here. Beautiful. Like up there, I could see that from my motel room. You can see how there's trees. You know, it's not really a sky island, but it's got some small trees on the almost to the almost to the peak. You see the peak right there. But going up that ridge line, there's there's actual trees up there. That'd be a pretty beautiful hike to get up there. That'd be a nice walk. But it's a beautiful mountain range they have here. Beautiful. 
on both sides and they sit right down in the valley in the middle between it and I-10 runs right through the middle too. So you get a view on both sides as you're driving through. Well, we'll stay on it. I wanted to fly the drone, but the wind's blowing too much right there. So it's not a good choice to try to fly it here. But yeah, this, is, this thing's going right up the mountain, this road. Pretty cool how they made this road. Look at that, beautiful. Path less, less taken. They choose. Go down I 10 back to LA quicker. So I can get back to the beach and do some more filming. The coast or take the road less taken. You can see what's out here. A little bit longer route to get back to the coast and then I'll get down to San Diego and then work my way back up to LA look at that view wow man you definitely don't want to fall off here you go off there you're in a world of hurry it's a long drop baby Turn out quarter mile. Wow, look at that rock. Right now we're at 3,000 feet elevation. So it's, it's, it's getting up there, man. You still got higher peaks, man. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. Beautiful. That guy's going too fast, man. You need to slow down. Especially on these turns. We're still climbing. There's the other half of the mountain range. It's on the other side of I-10. It's over there. I'll have to look it up and see what the, the mountain range this is. It's a pretty high peak. idea what's out here. I just saw it on the map. Saw that this road goes through this mountain. And I figured, what the heck. I'm here. Just go drive it and see. Alright, now it looks like it's starting to descend. Now yeah, we're starting to go down now.
bad Cassie's not here to see it. Cassie would love this. Couldn't bring her on this trip. I, w I wish I could have. But uh, some of the places that I stay don't accept pets. And they're the only places that were available. Um, so, yeah, so she had to sit this one out. I'm sure she's fit to be tied because I left her at the house. did this road. And you know, some hard work. People that labored on this, on this road. We went down and then we're going back up now. Wow, look at that house. Look at that. See that house up there? You don't see that or no? Look at that house way up there on top of that on top of that peak up there. It's a house up there, man. Wow. I don't know if you can see that far in the GoPro. Two-story house up there. Pretty interesting. And I bet you it gets cold, cold, cold out here in the wintertime. At this elevation. Always having rock, uh, watch out for rocks falling, especially in the rainy season. The big mountain range. Shrub brush, trees are getting a little bigger. Not much bigger, but a bigger, so there's more, more foliage on the side of the mountain. Thousand feet, so we've gone up another four thousand. Now look at this, starting to see trees.
Cassie would be missing this, boy, let me tell you. Those ears of hers would be perked up checking all this scenery out. She knows that whenever we go to Tucson, out there and also in West Texas, out there in the El Paso area, looking at the mountains as we're driving. That's the nursery. Turn down. Little hidden gems out here, California. Driving these old back roads. So we're entering the San Bernardino National Forest, part of it, at least part of it. We're a ways away from uh, Big Bear Lake, which is in the center of it, up in the mountains. I've been there years ago. It's been a long time. I don't know. We'll see if I have time on this journey to go over there. We'll see. It's a beautiful place up top. San Bernardino Mountains, Big Bear Lake. Beautiful place up there. One thing about GoPros, man, you got limited time because once they overheat, you gotta let them cool down. They overheat all the time. It doesn't matter which model you have. I've owned them since GoPro 6. I still have that old GoPro 6. Forest Ranger there, man. filming in the car <laughs> sorry anyway I've had them since GoPro 6 and everyone every one of them man overheats that's just the nature of the beast it's hot the lithium battery it's hot and you gotta let it cool down camera that I ever owned because I mainly it's always been GoPro but I did have a, a fit for it action camera which is basically about the same model or their when they used to compete I guess when when it was a GoPro 6 so uh, but I wasn't very really impressed with it I've been thinking about getting the insta 360 uh, trying out the DJ, DJI uh, action camera. It just GoPro has always been plug and play, man. Real easy to use. 
uh, easy to download. Just put your cable to it, or just take the SD card out and download it. So now that we're getting into the San Bernardino uh, National Forest, we're starting to see trees now. On the backside of these mountains, into this mountain range. So I'm not sure what the mountain range was that we just drove through. I'll have to look that up, but it's not San Bernardino Mountains. We're in San Bernardino Mountains now. We're in a whole nother mountain range. But I'll have to check to see what the name of those are. I just don't recall right off hand. But I'll plug it in once I, once I look at it and see what it, what it is. But I've been here before. I've been up in the San Bernardino Mountains, just not on this side of the San Bernardino Mountains. I was on the side of San Bernardino Town. The town, that's the side I came up through and went to Big Bear Lake. This is the, I don't want to say back side, but I would say probably the east side of the mountain range. That's where this road's going up through. So we're on the east side of it, coming in from the east instead of the west like I did the last time I was out here. The Forest Service Station, Mr. Grande. Hi, danger. So it's a no, uh, no fire, no campfire, no, no burn anywhere because you're in high fire season. California, you know, has had all them issues with uh, wildfires, among other states. New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, pretty much all of them have that have. Uh, had issues and I really think yeah the climate's changing it always changes the climate is always changing just look at history it's always changed the climate's not the same as when the Romans were here you know the climate's not the same when the Egyptians were here it was there it was different it was more tropical up and down the Nile more greener now it's all desert out there so the climate's always changed but I think the issue here with our uh, forests getting lit up is just the policies that we've had for the last 30, 40 years, about 30, 35 years. Because used to, they used to come in in the national forest and they would clear anything that was dead and clean it up and get rid of it. They would log it, but the policy was changed because they wanted to leave it as is by 30, 35, maybe 40 years ago. They, about 35 I want to say I'd have to look that up too to be exact but they changed the policy if the tree falls over and dies it's just left there and all that is is tender for a burn after it piles up over decades of course you're going to have these massive wildfires that just uh, I kind of like this I'd like to fly the drone here too be interesting to see the valley you can see down there so um, I think it's a combination of things I think it's a combination of, uh, of climate change and I think it's a combination of just uh, policy practices with uh, you know and like you see how thick the trees are they used to thin out the trees you know and uh, so you wouldn't have them so close together. Yeah, they just don't do that anymore. And that may be something that they need to read look. Because we've always had devastated wildfires. You know, the one up in Idaho, right there, north of, uh, uh, right there on the Yellowstone border, back in the, and around the turn of the century, burnt an entire place that is the size of Connecticut and that was around the turn of the century massive world massive wildfire so it's uh, so it's nothing new you see it in the news and they make it seem like that this has never happened before but it has people just don't know history there has been major wildfires before 
before the 21st century. It's a pretty beautiful overlook out there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it drops down into a valley below. I put the drone up a while ago when I came into the forest, right there at the marker sign. Um, but the wind, like I said, I was having trouble keeping it stabilized in the picture because the wind is really blowing. You see the trees moving? That's a shame, man, because this is beautiful. This would be another beautiful, epic uh, drone shot. But um, it's dicey, man. <laughs> You're always taking a chance. You know, you should, you know, when you put it up in, in, you know, you should never put it up in high wind, period. I mean, the winds are moving. I don't like anything over 20 miles an hour. I prefer no wind at all, or five to eight mile an hour wind under 10 mile an hour. That's because the reason is, is you want the drone to be stable. So when you're shot, your picture isn't bouncing. I know it has a gimbal on it, but the smaller the drone, the less stable it is when there's wind fluctuation because it's always like this it's uh, and it's trying to it's trying to find its its stable point and it's always trying to work that so it's not uh like i say it's not the best perfect conditions no wind that's why whenever i film my fishing videos if you notice all the drone footage is first thing in the morning before the wind picks up because out there on the lower laguna madre when that wind picks up, I put the drone up one time in 30 mile an hour winds, and I, and I didn't like it. I like to never got it back to the boat, so I learned my lesson. Uh, it just just because of the wind trying to get it back because the boat was moving, and and you're trying to line, land it back on a moving target. You know, other than that, when the wind's down, I don't have any issues. I can be drifting along and I can land it no problem as we're still moving. But uh, I always think in the back of my mind, I don't go too far with it and because, you know, it's a lot of money, man, to lose a, a piece of equipment like that out there in the salt water. But man, I want to throw it up, but you see, look at the trees, the trees, look at that pine tree, it's moving. The right decision here is not to do it, even though I want to do it, but that's the right decision. It's a shame. Because man, it's a beautiful valley over there. That'd be an epic shot. Look at all that mountain range. Look how it comes back. Beautiful. But always fly safe. Uh, you'll see in some of my fishing videos, the drone's not flown at all because the wind was already up. And so I, I don't even take the chance of putting it up. Like I said, I did it one time in 30 mile an hour wind and I learned my lesson. I like to never got it back to the boat. It was a struggle to get it back down there. But uh, but when the wind's blowing, I, I don't even I don't even use the drone. I don't even fly it. So we're gonna keep going here. I want to fly it here, but the wind's blowing too much. It's this beautiful country. Beautiful country out here. Banger struggling to go up over these hills, man. I don't think this car's got a turbo on that four banger.
Just a point one mile. So that'd be interesting to see. I'm gonna let this car get past me. I'm gonna pull over and let this car pass us. It'd be interesting to see what Vista Point is. See what kind of view you have there. Wow, look at the mountain back there. Beautiful. You can't, well, you can't see it, but I can see it through the trees. Beautiful scenery. Redwood trees. A lot of redwoods here, and uh, they're not real big in San Bernardino, but they're but they have redwoods. You know, popular, also popular. I say popular, but popular is what they are. Pines mixed in with redwood. So this is Vista Point, I guess. So it says Lake Fullmore. This is a lake here somewhere. I would like to see that. Well, let's see if we can get a turnaround and come back around. I didn't see that on the map. And how far is the lake? That's the million dollar question. It's right there, it's a quick easy hike. Or like five miles down the, down the trail. And I'm looking over here and I don't see a lake. All I see are trees and mountains. So Vista Point's up here. I'll pull over at Vista Point and I'm going to relook at the map. See how far that lake is from, this, from the road. Lake Fullmore. It's interesting. So this is Vista Point. Indian Vista. Oh wow, there is a big lake right here. Look at on this map. Let's get out and take a look. Head east toward California 243 South. Alright, let's see how far down. Alright guys, the GoPro overheated again and died. So we've been driving. We're, we're deep into the forest now. Uh, I looked at that lake. It's a good distance. The uh, Pacific Crest Trail comes right across through here. So it'd be a good walk to go to that lake. Look at that redwood tree right there. It's a redwood. I say there's some redwoods here, but they're not massive like you'd find up in Yosemite or Redwood Forest. But there, there are redwoods uh, sprinkled in amongst here. That's one thing I do remember on my last trip out here, way back in the day, that I did because I did I did some hiking about uh, uh, Big Bear Lake, and when I went back into the forest. There were a lot of redwood trees, but they weren't big. Let me see if we can spot another one. There's a lot of pines right here and some poplar. But let's see if we can spot another redwood. There's one growing. So you can see these sticks on the sides of the road. That's the market, see how high that is? That's the market for the snow line. So you know once it snows, I showed you that, that, a lot, that it snows here big time. So you know where the road ends so you don't fall off the cliff. See all these stick markers, look how high they are. So that means they get high snow packs here when it's snow season. I don't know when snow season starts in California. I know in Colorado it usually starts around uh, Halloween, but they've already got snow. It started early for it this year. Snow's already fallen in Colorado, and it's not even close to being Halloween yet. But look at this—you can see 
that's what those markers are those sticks are so high to let you know where the where the road ends so you don't fall off the cliff when it's full of snow So when the snow plows come through here, they know how to plow the road and stay on the road and not fall off. It's not for it's not for drivers, regular you know people like like me, regular drivers in a car. It's for the snow plows so they know where the edge of the road is while they're plowing snow. Because if they got six feet of snow that they're pushing, they got to be able to see where the edge of the road is. But that's anywhere you go. That's in Washington. That's anywhere where there's snow. They're going to have that. To help out the uh, so snow plows. There's some redwoods right there. You see them? Redwood trees. Nice little group of them. So yeah. It's beautiful back here. One of these days when I have more time, I would love to just linger through here. I'd be impressed. I got an old 2004 F350 that I'm working on. If I ever get that thing on the road, get it running, uh, I'm gonna put a camper on it so that I can come and just camp on the back. When you go RVN, there's all kinds of People have different tastes, you know. I mean, people want all the amenities of home. And then some people like roughing it, or you're just sleeping out under the stars. I kind of in between. Something that would work for me, that would be, uh, how should I say, feasible, would be a one-ton truck with a camper on the back. Because it's not that big. You can get in and out pretty much wherever you want to go with it. You don't have to pay registration on the camper, just on the truck. But if you have an RV, you got to pay registration on that every year and get it registered. So it saves money on that aspect. But the one I would, I would like to get is the one that has hard collapsible sides. Um, I don't like the soft ones, especially when you're in bear country. Uh, I would, you know, you just need to watch where you park because if they smell your food, they're going to come for it, and if it's a if it's a pop-up, they're gonna be, they're gonna tear right through that and get in it. But they do make hard side ones that are collapsible. Um, they're just the, the only downside to those is they're just not as energy efficient, meaning you're gonna burn more energy in it to keep it warm in the winter time and cool in the summertime because since it's collapsible walls, it doesn't have a lot of insulation in it. But like I say. That's something I want to look into the future. Put a camper on the back of that truck. And that'll be my rig for traveling. Not having to spend so much in motel rooms, money on motel rooms. I just have the rig on the back of the truck. We'll see. One of these days. I gotta get the truck restored first and run it. <laughs> Before I even think about that. So... Pine Cove. Oh yeah, it's a beautiful scenic drive here. San Bernardino Forest is pretty cool. I've been to a lot of national forests on my travels. I, I 
can't really say I have one that's a favorite because they're all beautiful. They all have their own uniqueness. Um, they're just all incredible. So I guess I'm in Idlewood now. I didn't think I've already traveled 30 something miles. I don't, I don't think we are. It's at Idlewood RV Park back there. I just think that's the name of it. I don't think this is Idlewood, but I could be wrong. I think a little gas station. 619, baby. Gas. Not too bad, because down in Hollywood, man, it was 8 bucks at 798 Crazy for gas, so. Not too bad. When I was coming out here for this Power Trip concert, I was thinking about getting a cabin here, but it was just way too far to drive because everything was just too expensive out in Indio and Palm Springs and uh, Desert Hot Springs. Whenever they have uh, festivals like that, the, uh, the the hotels and motels they jack their rates, man. They, I mean, it's a ripoff, man. They rip you off. I mean, the Motel 6 there in uh, Palm Springs, for those days, those three days of that event, was $1,500 at a Motel 6. That's crazy, man. $1,500. At any other regular motel, you're talking $500 a night, $600 a night, $700 a night, and all the way up to, for three days, $5,000, $4,000. Just crazy numbers. So I stayed in Cabazon, which was 40 miles away. I stayed at the uh, at the Morongo Casino Resort and Spa Hotel. And actually, that's a pretty, uh, you know, I don't gamble, so I couldn't tell you about gambling, but it seemed like there were a lot of people there, you know, gambling, that they come from all over. I mean, it says it was voted best uh, casino resort by the L. All right, so we're in Idlewood little mountain town uh, GoPro died again overheated that's one thing I hate about GoPros <laughs> but anyway I was talking about the, the cost of staying out there um, whenever they have any type of event stagecoach Coachella power trip they get together and they set the prices man you're not gonna find no deal so that's why I stayed at the Morongo over in Casabon and uh, and actually, it was a pretty nice hotel, resort. They had everything there. I didn't get to enjoy any of the amenities. The spa, the, the swimming pool. I didn't have no time to be able to lay around out there. Enjoy the hot tub, the jacuzzi, all that stuff, man. But they pretty much had everything right there. Maybe, I don't know, one of these days I'll go by, I'll be, stay there again. I, I, I don't know when that'll ever happen. It was just one of those things. It was a fluke because I couldn't get a room anywhere else. But like I said before, I thought about coming up here and renting a cabin and staying here and then driving to Indio every day, but it was just too far, you know. I mean, just uh, from Casabon to Indio, that's an hour's ride. And it's only 40 miles because of the traffic and stuff, you know. Don't think about California. Out here with this little two lane and all this going through the mountains passes and everything it would take hours just to get back here every night because the, the event was ending you know at 12 1 in the morning every night and then it, then I had another hour's drive but it would have been pretty cool to be able to come out here and be staying here while I was going there it just wasn't uh, meant to be pretty nice so we just passed through Idlewood that was the town of Idlewood small little mountain town now we're going down the slope here
Thunder's Metal Drive. stay moving towards San Diego so we're taking the long route to go back to San Diego but I want to take the back roads basically and just see because I've never I've never traveled this way I always like to I like the open road before me 